What is up, everybody? I'm Matt Pete. You're listening to the Matt Pete Marketing Podcast. And today I'm stoked because we have Anna Gray on the podcast. Now, Anna or Banana, to her friends, host of the podcast Mastering the Art of Groups, is a Facebook group strategist, adoptive mom of two, and 20 year operating room nurse who lives just north of Los Angeles. She has built successful online businesses using Facebook groups as her sole strategy for over 10 years. She's the creator of the Done For You group content creation membership conversation starter and her signature course, Mastering the Art of Groups. Anna works full-time in an operating room while running two businesses and she still has time to play ice hockey and tennis. So she's doing like eight times more than what I do a week. So I've got no excuses. <laughs> I want to throw it over to you. Say, hey, everybody, and kind of tell them where they can learn more about you real quick. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. And uh, that was very awesome to listen to <laughs> all these titles and stuff. Um, yeah. So you can find me at, in my Facebook group. Let's make it easy. It's called Facebook group success with Anna Gray and, uh, or on my website, Anna B gray.com. So that's the easiest place to find all of my stuff. Awesome. And wherever everybody's listening to this, I'll have it linked up so they can just click right on over to that. And I just joined your Facebook group here recently. And mainly because I was listening to your podcast, The Mastering the Art of Groups. Um, so if anybody out there is on Facebook, I feel like this is going to be on the radar somewhere for a business. I feel like it's super smart to know this stuff. Um, but definitely go check out Anna's podcast, Mastering the Art of Groups, because that's where I found out about her group. And her process for like approving and like how she gets conversations started. So I joined and just kind of watched her actually do the things she talks about on her podcast. And it was really cool to see. It was really awesome. Thanks um, for joining me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I mean, and for anybody out there who started a group, I was telling Anna before we kind of got going here. I used to have a Facebook group uh, for an old podcast I had and couldn't get any interaction. Um, so I'm excited to have her on here because I clearly don't yeah. know what I'm doing in that area. And she clearly does. Yeah, you're not alone. So don't <laughs> worry. I, I'm, I'm here to ease your pain. You're not alone. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So before we get too deep into Facebook groups, I want to start everybody off with a pod deck question. You might listen to the podcast has seen this happen on other episodes. I randomly draw a question and it kind of gives us our first question here. So let's pick that random card. See what we got. I know, right? Drum roll. <laughs> yeah. Who are your heroes in real life? Who are my heroes in real life? Oh, that's a loaded question. Okay. So I will start out by saying my mom, and she would be so happy to hear that because I don't always tell her that, but she is my hero. She was single mom raising two kids. And, you know, it just did it right. And I, I, I have two daughters, two teenage daughters, and I don't know how she did it. So that, I've always looked up to her. She was a workaholic. So you look at all those things I do <laughs> throughout the week. I probably got it from her. Um, so I would say my mom, and I would also say, you know, my colleagues at uh, my day job. I work in the operating room and these guys, these surgeons I assist are just amazing. So every day I walk in and I just am amazed by, you know, what they do. So they're my heroes in a totally different sense. That is awesome. That is an awesome answer. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of jump into some questions here. If you see my buddy okay. Stitch running around, he just kind of ran in front of my camera. He's my little black cat we rescued. So he's kind of <laughs> free roaming back right. here. Um, <laughs> all right, Anna. So you do Facebook organic group reach, correct? How, how would you say your specialty for marketing? Okay. I would say yes, absolutely. hundred percent organic growth for Facebook groups. You know, most people that start out with Facebook groups don't necessarily have a budget for Facebook ads. I will say that I, have done it both ways, but I wanted to prove to people that you could actually build and grow a Facebook group without any money. And that really, uh, it's not easy, but it's totally doable and it's actually enjoyable. And so I decided that, you know, yes, sure. You can, you can set those ads to go and, you know, bring in this influx of people, but why not teach people how to grow their group without a budget so that, 
let's just say maybe their Facebook ads don't work. How are they still going to maintain or grow on a consistent basis? Um, so I really, really take pride in the fact that you can grow a Facebook group for your business, any type of business, organically, uh, without ads, using multiple strategies, you know, whatever strategy fits for you and your business and actually you and yourself as a person. Um, you know, sometimes we just don't connect with certain things, you know, sometimes we are, we, we don't connect with creating YouTube videos or, you know, Pinterest, or there's so many different ways to grow a community. So I'm a big fan of growing a community that connects with you because if you don't like it, you're not going to do it. And also to do it, uh, you know, for free so that you never have an excuse of why you can't grow your Facebook group. That's interesting. So with Facebook groups, I had honestly never thought of doing like paid ads to grow a Facebook group. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, it's not as easy or straightforward as you think. You Setting up an ad that goes straight to a Facebook group or, or presenting it as, you know, join my Facebook group don't actually do very well. You have to kind of go around and about to get it to convert. Um, I will say that there, you know, I reached a moment where I've tested it all out and I decided, okay, now it's time for me to, to, to build this bigger than, you know, bigger than organic. And uh, I have a really successful ad running and it's just uh, simply, it goes to one of my most watched workshops and it's just a free workshop. And that's where my, my ad uh, is sent and my members join the workshop. They click join the group and it's, it's converting group members and opt-ins almost, you know, one-to-one. I mean, I, I can pretty much predict that when I see an opt-in come across, I'm going to see a Facebook group join come across. So that's really how building your group using Facebook ads is, uh, makes more sense. Okay. That's, that's interesting. And like, like you said, like growing it organically is kind of where you kind of wanted to fall in that niche. Yeah. So that's what I enjoy doing. I like to throw it back. How I mentioned earlier, had a Facebook group. Uh, with my old podcast. And I couldn't tell you how many members it has off the top of my head, but it was definitely less than 50, probably less than 25. Okay. Um, and, and like, I would mention it on the podcast and I was getting, you know, anywhere from a thousand to 1500 downloads a month. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, not great, not horrible. It's kind of right in that sweet spot, I guess. But uh, I would, wouldn't get anybody to join. I had like the people that I, you know, connected with right off the bat with the podcast who like had messaged me on Facebook. I was able to message them and talk to them about it, get them to join. But then once people joined, there was no interaction. Um, so right. what would you suggest? I mean, for somebody starting, well, a there's Facebook a couple group, layers yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple layers there. So to, to give you some credit, I will say that just recently Facebook groups have become popular again. Like being a part of a Facebook group is actually enjoyable for people. But years ago, it was not. There were too many groups out there that were, in my eyes, doing it wrong. So as a consumer in a group, people were just turned off by them because they weren't getting the experience. They weren't enjoying what they were seeing. They, they weren't, they were, they didn't want to spend their quality time in these groups. So it was really hard to stand out as a Facebook group owner. Now, you know, people have really warmed up to being a part of community. I have to say Facebook has really put in, has gone all in with groups. If you've ever seen, you know, an ad on TV for Facebook, it's been about Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. And um, so now it's becoming more and more acceptable to have a group, which is awesome. The only problem is, is that we're still using the strategies that we used a few years ago, which didn't work, right? So that's yeah. all we know. So in order to stand out in this place that now you've got this, this warm environment where people are, okay, uh, you know, I'm willing to, to look and see what you've got versus, you know, I don't even want to be a part of groups. They're a waste of my time. So way back when that was what, what was happening. And I will tell you that my past history in my first business, 
was actually the network marketing business. And I will say that the network marketing space gave Facebook groups a really bad name <laughs> because that would, those were the days where everyone would mm. add all their friends and their mother and their grandmother and everybody they, that they possibly could add to a group. And it was such a turnoff to people. And I will say that I was lucky enough to figure out how to do it the right way and built this highly successful business doing it that way when it was really, really hard and people just didn't, didn't enjoy Facebook groups. So now you're actually set up for success now because Facebook had, you know, put in some, some, uh, you know, stops to adding people to groups and, you know, the, the whole term of putting you in Facebook group jail or Facebook jail. Um, so there are, they, they've, they saw what was happening and they created, uh, an environment now where, you know, you really have to have permission to be in that group. So you're, uh, you're already in a good, good place to, you know, start off and say, okay, now I'm going to do it the right way. And people are more going to be more warm to join. So I say that because when you, um, when you invite people to your group from your podcast, it's going to be more well received now than it used to be. So if you say, Oh, join my group, people are going to more likely join your group now than they were back then hmm. because they've, they've been able to experience a better, a better experience in, in other groups. So the, they're a little bit you know warmer than they were. So I would, I would highly suggest nowadays, you know, if you have a podcast You've got this platform to say, hey, join us in the group. Then it becomes this whole other strategy of, you know, how do I keep them in the group? How do I get them engaged? But the, just the invite to the group, you'll have a much higher conversion than you used to have. That's, that's kind of my point with that. So um, you're ahead of the game now. You've, and you're, you've already <laughs> seen what's happened before, but I can guarantee you you're going to get better results now just because of the climate of Facebook. And truthfully, people want a kind of a reprieve of what's going on in the, you know, in their news feed. They hate Facebook. You know, you'll see that all the time. Oh, I hate Facebook. I don't like it. I don't want to spend my time in it. But the only time that they do like to spend is in the groups that they connect with because it, they can control that right? They can't control their news feed and what shows up, but they can control the button that says, I want to visit this group today and see what I missed. You have, you have the ability to bring people into that world because they want to be there. So you have the, the ability to have their Facebook attention, which is a gr amazing, amazing opportunity, right? Yeah. That's, that's huge. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a good time right now to have a Facebook group. That tell is, you. Okay. So now you've got me, cause I, I haven't created one for this podcast yet, but now you've got me seriously second guessing that. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have so a thought, just a thought going off of that. You kind of, you kind of mm -hmm. talked about a little bit there. I have a Facebook page set up for this. We can go and like it and that kind mm -hmm. of, you know, the generic stuff is the Facebook group geared more towards the people interacting and them posting or like what content do I post that's different from on the page? Page. Uh, that's a great question. It's the question I get all the time. So here's how I look at the Facebook page versus the Facebook group. Facebook page is open to the public, right? Mm -hmm. So chances are, and quite honestly, it, it, today, 2020, Facebook pages are really paid to play. Facebook pages are built for Facebook ads. In the old days, you could post on your Facebook page and you would get a lot of engagement. Nowadays, it's possible, but the likelihood of you getting that engagement on the page is very, very minimum, unless you're going to pay for ads for you know people to see those posts. So I look at the Facebook page as really being this outside, you know, on the other side of the door, the front door. It's really that billboard of like what to expect, that first impression, who are you, what do you have, go, well, tell me a little bit about your personality, but it's not really the place where people are going to have a conversation or share their tips or tricks because it is out there in the public. It is out there in the open. 
So it's, it's really an opportunity. Your page is really an opportunity for people to just get to know you and say, do I want to take that next level and really spend time with you? So the group is really where they say, they make that commitment. They say, okay, I like what I've seen on your page. Now I really want to see, I want to spend more time with you and the people that you bring to your community. And that's, that's really where the magic happens is because you attract a certain type of person. And I just saw this uh, show up in my page today, this morning, I think it was. And it was a compliment that this is, these are the people that I attract. And it's, it's, you know, there's something to say about that is when you are on the outside world, like your podcast, your business page, your anything outside of a group, you really give that first impression. Do I want to, do I want to learn more from this person? And then they spend more time with you in the group because again, it is this kind of this bubble, this controlled environment that you have that you can give them an experience, a journey where you can't do that outside of the group. And that's how I look at the two, two pieces being different. So the content, yeah, is going to be a little bit different. My content on my Instagram is very much the same as my business page because they're both this outside world, this outside first impression. But the content in my group is completely different than the page because it's really, I'm talking to my people, you know, like, these are my people. I've already yeah. vetted you by clicking the accept and join I want you to be in here because I see that you want to be here. And so my, my, um, the way I show up is different than the way I show up on my outside pages. So that's hopefully that, that makes it a little clearer. Absolutely. Absolutely. So follow up one last one before we move on. I promise. So <laughs> I start <laughs> a Facebook good. group, zero people in it. And then like, it's, it's mm -hmm. me and my wife hanging out in this Facebook group. I mean, is is there a proper way to launch so you don't just launch with no people like should you launch if you only have four friends who are going to join or do you need to launch with like 100 people or like yeah okay it's a great question if you say it's going to be you and your wife in there it's going to be you and your wife in there <laughs> you have to have a plan just okay. like everybody everything else you do right you're going to launch a course you're going to launch a podcast you have to have a plan okay so if i launch a podcast what am I going to talk about? Who is my audience? What, you know, all of these things have to line up before you even click the publish button. It's the same thing when it comes to your group. You have to have a plan. You can't just say create group and then just hope that by you saying join my group, that's where people fail. That is the number one thing I think that people fail at is they click okay, I'm supposed to have a group, click join group. And then I invite people to the group, but I really don't know what I'm going to share. So now I only have a group of 10 people and I feel inadequate, right? Yeah. Back it up and have a plan. And you say, okay, who do I want in this group? Same as setting up a podcast. Who do I want in this group? How do I want this group to feel and look and smell and sound like? Those are all the things that we never think about. And if you start out with that first, and then you say, hey, join my group, you've already got that into place. You already, you already have set the stage for you and the type of content you're going to share and the type of people you're going to invite or you're going to accept. And you know who's a good fit and who's not. So naturally, the conversations are going to occur because you've, you've, you've created that filter too. You know, you're like, okay, this is this. I see this person's profile. I see that this is a, a good match. Maybe they have a podcast, right? Uh, yeah, they're a good fit. Let's join. Or you see someone that's got, you know, their dog as their profile page and they have no, you know, no info in their bio. And they like, no, I'm not going to click accept. That's not a good fit for my group. Decline, right? So I'm the master at declining people. It sounds so counterintuitive. People say, oh, I've grown my group to, you know, thousands and thousands. Of th they don't even know who's in there. And they say it's a numbers game. I totally buck the system with that because my job becomes so much easier when I know exactly who's in the group. So the numbers don't matter to me. It's who's in there and the experience that they're getting, the experience that I'm getting, and it makes me want to show up right? So you have to come up with a plan before you even click join, but it doesn't matter how many people you can have two people in there. As long as you have a plan, everybody wins. 
Awesome. Awesome. Man, I love that. That's so good. So I'm going to go ahead and move on here before I spend all of our time on one question. So what's something you see people doing in their marketing that makes you cringe? One thing to avoid doing. Well, since I'm, uh, you know, since I'm a Facebook group nerd, um, I typically cringe when I see the same Oh, this is really, this is happening a lot these days in the groups that I, in these business groups I'm in. And it's like, I, I created this system that, you know, will put money in your bank. Do you want, do you want the PDF for it? Click below. And then they get, you know, a hundred posts below that. And it's like, it's so obvious to everyone in the group and yet everybody still falls for it. And I see it happen over and over and over again. It drives me nuts. It's like, those are the people that are seeking the numbers and not the quality. Yeah. So I I say that, you know, it's really obvious of what's happening and people are out there to get things for free. But, you know, in the long run, is that going to, is that going to benefit you? Is it going to benefit them? No. When you, when you want the people that want everything for free, you you have a really hard time converting them into you know paying you money yeah so i i just see it over and over and over again that i just um not a big fan of <laughs> yeah I've, i'm in a few facebook groups two off the top of my head i'm not going to mention which ones they are but like they're just not managed well they're like groups that you had to apply to get into and everything but then you get posts like that where it's like yeah the most like you said hey who uh, who wants to make a million dollars next year drop your name below or say yes in the comments yeah. or whatever. And then they end up Facebook messaging you. And it's like, it, it's just yeah. so horribly managed. It's like the low lying fruit for them. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's a rookie move. I don't know. That's the only way I can think of it. It's a rookie move. It's and, like, if you, yeah, you know, yeah, if and, you really and, are. I, I agree. It, it's a, it's a low hanging fruit. And uh, along yeah. with that, like I see also seeing the groups and, and maybe, you have an idea of why people do this. They go in and they'll post like the most generic, like who's improving themselves every day kind of question with like the background and they get like a bunch yeah, of comments, yes. but like what, goes along the same line. Yeah. Like, is that literally just to get people to look at their profile because it's super frustrating. It has nothing yeah, to do with the group. That's exactly what it is. Okay. It's, And it's obvious. It's obvious to everyone. It's, it's, and the ones that I will tell you, the people that fall for it are, well, maybe they're not my, they're not my kind of people. You know, it's like, those aren't the people that I want in my group. I'm sorry, but you know, I want to connect with you so that I don't have to work very hard to convert you into, you know, need or into using what I have, my solution. So it's just, that's exactly what it is. It's a, it's, I don't know what you would call it a hack, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just going to post this random thing. The other thing is too, is if you're the group owner, like you said, it's poorly managed. If you, those are the groups that you have no idea who's running the group. Yeah. You have no, I, don't even, so I don't even know if there's any What's the point of the group, right? Yeah. What's the point of the group as the group owner? Because they've completely lost touch of their group. So it really is, it's just kind of this free for all. Yep. And, you know, I mean, we all spend time in there because we all are still looking for people that really do need help. But those, those, I mean, that's going to, that's going to come and go really quick. Just like what I talked about earlier in the, in the network marketing days where you would add everybody to the, and your, their mother to the group and people are like, Whoa, no, no, no. And that's exactly what's going to happen is this is going to be so obvious. And then what's going to happen is that those groups are, people aren't going to want to spend time in them. So whoever is the owner of the group is going to miss out and it's their, their group is going to be kind of a waste and you're going to, you're going to find more groups <laughs> like mine, yep. um, where it is this genuine connection and it is this genuine conversation around the topic of, you know, what you're, what you're talking about and really, and it, and those conversations, it can be random, but they're, but they're genuine, you know? Yeah. Like, do you want a 18 layer cake or do you want a cheesecake? I mean, I used that today and yeah. it was, it had everything to do with my, my niche, you know, um, and not, trying to just get comments you know exactly and then so that'll fall that'll fall away yeah 
which is good because I've un- I've left a couple groups now where I joined and literally just right. got inundated with messages from people trying to sell me stuff. Um, yeah, but mm-hmm. I, like like you said, you I joined your group today and I was just scrolling through it and like you see the genuine interaction between people. So like yeah. in one of those groups I was in, somebody posted the other day. They're like, "Who is committed to improving themselves in every way?" For every day or something like that and I commented and I was like nope not me because I don't want to I'm not good at everything right. well, I don't want to improve everything but like I was ready to have a conversation about it and the person didn't even yeah. respond <laughs> like I had a bunch of people like it because yeah. of the people who are like me who are like I'm tired of these kind of posts like I just I don't yeah. care and it's like <laughs> I just, love that you did the, that actually <laughs> the person didn't want like I was ready to have a conversation about it. I was like you're gonna post a stupid post in a group yeah. you're gonna get stupid yeah. answers um yeah but yeah, like I was in your group yep. and I saw the genuine interaction. It's like, this is, this is going to be a really helpful group. You can just tell right off the bat. Yeah. And then, you know what? I will be honest that that's when people start their group, that's what they want. They want yeah. a genuine, they want a genuine conversation. They just don't know how to do it because they've never been taught how to do it. They don't really understand how it works. Um, and they just throw stuff at the wall and they, they hope that it sticks and then it doesn't. And they're like, oh, I just hate Facebook. I hate showing up in my group because nobody shows up, nobody comments, nobody likes, nobody engages. And it's just because they don't have the tools to to really understand, you know, even Facebook group psychology. There really is a Facebook group psychology. I wish I could create a a college course (laughs) for it because people, you know, I mean, you have all different kinds of groups, right? Yeah. You have, you have health and fitness groups. You have, I have authors, I have, you know, other social media managers, podcast, uh, owners, Pinterest strategists, you know, every type of group. So people show up different to every type of group. You have to understand those things. Why do the people show up? How often do they show up? You know, those layers that we just don't pay attention to. Yeah. And so like, once you understand that, you like crack the code and it just becomes this enjoyable thing. Like we were talking about in the pre-interview, I'm, I'm the moderator of like a big Facebook group. Mm-hmm. Like I in no way own the mm-hmm. business or anything like that. I'm literally just there. I do it for free. I go through and approve and decline yeah. posts. And like you said, they understand why their people are there. So the yeah. rules where I, where I decline posts it's like they share a live video or a pre-recorded video or, right. you know, spam, self-promotion, that kind of stuff, because yeah. it's yeah. a group for podcasters and right. they don't want people promoting their podcast to podcasters because they don't care. The pi- people in the group want to learn how to be better podcasters, not right. Their audience is in that vision. Group. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So like, yeah. I, I, dec- yeah. I decline probably yeah. 90% when there's a clear of vision. It makes it really easy. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's what it is. They yeah. have literally a set list of rules and most of them fall within two of the rules. Literally just go in decline and select the rule. It's super <laughs> nice. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. once they have that clear vision. Yeah. So, and if you were once to you start, have a clear vision oh, and yeah, yeah, go ahead. no, you're fine. You're totally fine. Clear vision. What I want to know. <laughs> well, I was going to say, once you have a clear vision and you understand who you actually want in that group, then those posts actually don't happen. I can't even True. tell you, I haven't, I haven't actually declined a post in my group in two and a half years wow. because of the filters I set in place before people even get in the group. And, and I don't have to worry about those things. So, you know, we set a little filter ahead of time and you don't end up having those people and and they slip through every once in a while, but you know, I've, I've never had to decline a post. That's super nice. Do you moderate every post that comes through? Like, do you have to like approve every one of them? I do. No, 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 no. They no because they don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. They don't, they took completely 100% 100% respect my group. That's awesome. And how I run my group. People will ask me all the time, can I post it? They'll send me a private message. Can I post this? And when I have time, I'll respond back. So they don't even post it. They wait until I respond. It's amazing. And sometimes I'll have to say, you know, it's not, I appreciate the fact that I really appreciate the fact that you're messaging me. It's really not in alignment with this group. So probably not that, but if there's another opportunity where I can present that, then I'll reach out to you and, you know, you can share. But so I get those kind of messages because they respect my group and they respect 
the rules. I never even talk about the rules in there, huh. but they understand when they walk in the door, they understand what kind of group it is. And, 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 you know, you're in this community and they don't want to mess with the community. So, but it all comes with the, the you know, the plan, having the plan and also setting, you know, setting a strategy on, on who you want in the group and whether they're a good fit or not. It's pretty easy to, to, to tell whether or not they're a good fit. And that right there saves so much time in the moderator world. So that's super yeah. cool. That's really awesome. Um, yeah. And you've built businesses using this. So I 100% yep. trust you. That's really cool. <laughs> yep. It works. It works. It works. So Anna, if you were to start marketing for a new business today, and you only had a thousand dollars in your budget. What would you do to get some new clients? That's a lot of money. Oh wow. I, I love that answer. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's true. I, you know, um what would I okay, so and you don't have to use the money. It's not required. Yeah. You just got I mean, a thousand you don't bucks really to spend. need to. <laughs> I would have a I would have a platform where people can find you. I mean, it's great because Facebook groups are free. How crazy is that? Who knows if that'll last forever? And that was a worry for that people had. Oh, well, they're charging Facebook pages. So they'll try. I've heard that for the last two years. So those people that waited, they're still waiting. <laughs> you know, they could have been making money. Um, I would say have a, you know, have a, a place where people can find you. So a, an easy website to put up because I built my own website for 10 years and then I scrapped that thing. And when I went into the Facebook group world, I went easy. Um, so have a place where people can find you. Uh, and, you know, I like all the systems behind the scenes, you know, like the, the, my, the place that I have my course loaded in and the, in a Evernote, I use Evernote a lot. So those are the things, those, those background things that make your life easy. Having a Zoom, a good a Zoom account and having a, like I said, I'm looking at the bottom of my, of my laptop, you know, all of the, oh, the, yeah, apps, the, <laughs> the apps that are open. Right. So, so having all of those in place, the systems in place to make your life easy so that you can go out and find, you know, those people like, you know, a YouTube account and get yourself a camera, a, a Logitech camera or, um, those little things that probably will add up to a thousand bucks, but those little things that make your life easy. So it's all the behind the scenes, um, fun little, you know, toys that, that I think are incredibly valuable that I use that, you know, I use and I have been using for 10 years, like zoom I've been using for 10 years. And then when this pandemic hit, people were like, Oh my gosh, I should have bought stock in zoom. And I'm thinking <laughs> if only, I mean, I've been using it for <laughs> forever. Um, so those things that make your life easy, cause that, that's, that's how I've been able to build a business in keeping an incredibly busy schedule. You know, I'm not doing anything by hand. I find solutions to, you know, fix easy problems. I love that. Cause most people talk about like running ads or something like that. And you're like, yeah, you know, I know. it's, it's all, like you said, it's no. all the small things all that really practical that yeah. help getting you get a good found. bike, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's like, it is, it is the little things. And I, again, like a Facebook group is free and I can, I can build relationships that will reach. I mean, the fact that I, I believe that the way we connected was through, was through someone who I had met in a Facebook group and I did a podcast interview and that didn't cost a thing. And I met them in a Facebook group. So too. it's <laughs> right. So it did, that, that didn't cost a thing. Right. So I said, a thousand bucks is easy. Um, but I have a good camera and I've got a good mic and you know, there we go. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. So what was the last book that you read that you could recommend? So you have a whole bookshelf back there. Uh, yeah. I know I have to it's like, also look color back coded. Quick. that's super awesome. Yes, I just recognize is. that. It it's like red for, and then white. Wow. It makes for a good backdrop. Yeah. That is okay, impressive. So I, <laughs> uh, well, ironically, the last book I read was a Russell Brunson book that's nice. sitting back there. So it was um, the Expert Secrets book. Okay. But it's been nice. a little while. But that was the, the last thing I've put back up on the shelf and, and looking at, you know, funnel strategy and um, 
I am a big fan of using a funnel when it comes to your Facebook group, because I do think that they go hand in hand with each other. Okay, I nice. do think, you know, the, 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 not the theory, but, but the concept of what if Facebook goes away tomorrow, what are you going to have? Right. Yep. I'm a huge fan of that because it is realistic. I, I teach Facebook groups. I teach building communities in Facebook. What happens if Facebook goes away tomorrow? Guess what? I still have an email list that matches my Facebook group list, you know? That's true. Uh, so uh, they really do go hand in hand. So I'm a big fan of that. So I just, I, um, I, I like to learn more and more about that and more and more strategy. I'm, I'm a big strategy fan. So that That's was my last book. Awesome. I love that. And I just, I'm in the middle of reading um, a Russell Brunson book right now too, Traffic Secrets, the one he just launched. Yep. I'm, I'm in the middle of that one. Um, yep. So you have a funnel for your, for your business, like you mentioned? I do. I do. Do you use ClickFunnels to, to do it? Um, I don't. <laughs> I use my own funnel. I use That's, my own hey, funnel. That works. That works. Yeah, yeah. No, I use I use Active Campaign and I okay. use um, you know, Member Vault is where my all my content is is held. I hadn't heard of that yet. Big fan of Member Vault. Yeah. If you scroll through my podcast, uh, there's an interview with the owner of Member Vault and it's just a great platform. It's just, I've watched them build that platform from the ground up and it just is a great, I convert so many people using Member Vault that are using my, that are in my courses that, um, yeah, it's a great platform. So what is, what is I built, you know, it, well, it's, uh, it's, if you're going to say surface level, it's a place for you to keep your content. Your, your, um, I have all my courses in there. I have my conversation starters in there, memberships in there, and it's really using this binge and buy concept. So for example, I'll, I'll just share my funnel. So I said in the beginning, I have a Facebook ad, right? And it goes to my most watched um, workshop slash webinar. Well, that webinar is sitting in my member vault. It's a product. So it goes, my, actually my landing page goes straight there. They, they consume the webinar, but they see all of the other products I have on that platform. So they, what happens is that they click on each thing and they go, Ooh, is this something I need? Ooh, is this something I need? And they're so they're already there. So what happens is that they, you're able to really either convert again, or they really get to know you and the products that you have. And so of course, and then on the back end, my emails drive back to that member vault account and they can just see all the products I have. And then the, you know, in the group, when I'm talking about my products, it goes back to my member vault account. And so it's really this kind of uh, full circle. It works really, really cool. well together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to really check that out in the podcast episode because yeah. that's, I'm always interested in yeah. learning new stuff like that. That's really And cool. I will tell you that their um their Facebook group for their platform is one of the best groups around. It is it is one awesome. of the most fun fun informative uh lighthearted but really just just so good. So I can't say enough about them. That is really awesome. I'm glad you mentioned that. And, um so you mentioned yeah. funnels yeah, so yeah. I have to talk about the sponsor for today's episode. I'm I'm obligated. <laughs> so have you heard of one yep, funnel? Yep. Have you, have you heard I of the one? For, of okay. It. So you had them. So anybody out there listening or watching one funnel away challenge is Russell Brunson and click funnels basically like their course 30 day challenge on creating a funnel, um, which like you said, if Facebook disappears tomorrow, what way do you have to have a business? Um, so I took the course a few months ago and that's why I'm promoting them now because I've done it and it's super awesome. Um, and you don't have to use ClickFunnels in order to take the course. They just, it, like week three, they actually talk about getting into ClickFunnels. So I didn't even have a ClickFunnels account for the first three weeks of this course. Um, mm -hmm. They send you all this cool stuff. So like I got the workbook here, which you just go through and you fill out as you go through it, which is super nice. Uh, this like 500 and something page book, which is basically... People, they went through and asked two comma club award winners uh, if you lost everything what would you do for the next 30 days to get your life back and then this really cool flash drive which comes in this box but it's like the one funnel away and it basically has all of the training audio podcast style on there 
So I immediately dropped it off of that flash drive into my iTunes account. So I would have it on my phone. Um, but that one funnel away challenge, since yeah. you mentioned funnels, I wanted to throw that out there because that one funnel away challenge, it only cost a hundred dollars and it's super mm-hmm. awesome. Um, so they are my sponsor one funnel away. If you go to mattpeat.com forward slash O F a, um, you take that and what that does literally, they don't make any money from running this. So cost a hundred bucks. If you sign up with my link, they, they give me the full $100. It's really cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really cool. And, um, that's really cool. Yeah. They, they say their evil plan is to show you how to make money with funnels. So you want to use mm-hmm. click funnels. So, I mean, they have a plan. Yeah. They yeah, tell yeah. you how it works into yeah. their funnel, but they right. literally don't make money. There's off no them. mystery. It's great. And, and it's one of the coolest courses I've yeah. taken online and I've taken a few now. Um, totally that's worth cool. $100. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, and if you haven't taken it, it's a hundred dollars for the one funnel away challenge. I know I'm, <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> All right. But, uh, I, again, I just wanted to mention that there's a sponsor for today's episode and we were talking about funnels. Um, so I'm going to check out member vault cause that sounds really cool, but I want you to tell us a story of your biggest marketing mistake, a time where you either wasted a lot of money or a lot of time doing something that didn't work. Well, okay. That's a good, that's a very good question. Cause there are lots of mistakes in 10 years, right. On the, on the surface level, but, but one that stands out would be to, I purchased a course because I had FOMO. I purchased a course because it just sounded cool because everybody I knew was buying it. And I just, and I never really connected with the person that was giving the course, but everybody else was. And so I thought, well, that's, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And I got sucked in for a whole entire year of payments. And every time this payment came across, I was like, what was I thinking? You know, I didn't listen to my gut. I did. I wasn't connected to it. I wasn't even I wasn't, that wasn't what I was looking for at the time. So I always say my biggest advice is just follow your gut. If, if it's something that you really like, you need it right now, it's going to, it's going to give you, you know, the key to unlock one more piece of the puzzle and you just can't stop thinking about it. Then it's then, then sign up for it or buy it or whatever. And I just, I did it because everybody else was doing it and I regretted it every, every day time that payment would drop I was, yeah so Man. and the fact that you were making payments over the course of a year tells me that it wasn't a 100 course so. exactly <laughs> exactly so yeah that would be my biggest mistake oh man i, I bought yeah. one course that was fairly expensive but i didn't buy it for the course material so i again saw those yeah. payments and, and looking back on it like hindsight 2020 i probably could have yeah. achieved what i yeah. bought the course for without spending it's like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars yeah. on the course. Yeah. But yeah. 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 And you know, a lot of the times too, I've done that where I have actually connected with the course, but the people inside the community were exactly who I wanted to spend time with. So I just I just looked at it a different way. I actually want to have this course because I want to be in that group. I want to be with those people. And I don't even care what the actual trainings or you know resources are i just want to be in that room and i i've done that on multiple occasions and it's been worth it every single time honestly sometimes that can be worth more than the actual course totally the totally. those facebook 100%. groups with those people like you said those targeted people that's that's where yeah. i found the most value in a lot of things i'm paying right now i'm part of a mastermind yep. where i pay so much money a month like yep. ongoing and Yep. It's because of the people in the group. They put content in the group and they share podcast episodes and all this kind of stuff they create specifically for the yeah. group. Yeah. For me, it's but about it the is people. the people. Yep. hundred percent. hundred percent. And I'm yeah. they're making yeah. money. It's great. You know, just by having a Facebook group, which like you mentioned before is a free, <laughs> free asset for them to have. <h <laughs> all right, Anna. But they've created this environment, right? They've yeah, attracted oh, those people. 
So, so they get all the credit for attracting all the people. I mean, I'm in another group that it's a, you know, I've been in it for years and I pay every month and, but I don't necessarily connect with the content anymore. I'm kind of beyond that, but the people in the group is the real reason why I'm in the group. So yeah, it's a, and a, it's a Facebook group. It's really cool. Cause like, even in that group, like you talking about like building those genuine interactions with people every Friday, yeah. the admin, the guy who I pay every month mm -hmm. goes in there and he does a post about sharing your wins for the week, your top goal mm -hmm. for next week and something you're struggling mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And like, I just posted in there before we got on the call and there are already people commenting back trying to help yeah. me with the struggle, you know, and people yeah. like celebrating. You it. get it's, a different type. Yeah, absolutely. You really do. It's super You get cool. a different type of connection and you're able to build relationships that really just kind of snowball and carry on. I have the most amazing business friends that are my dearest, dearest friends that I've met through Facebook groups. I mean, yep. you just build this connection. It's, it's just, it, and it, it advances you in, in, you know, your world. It just makes you better. It makes you a better business person. It makes you a better person. It's just amazing what they can do. Absolutely. So you got to look at it that way. That's my biggest thing. You have to look at it that way. And then once you do, it's like your whole world changes. I love it. I love it. Do you have any other marketers you follow for inspiration? Um, yeah, I, uh, I think one of those, you know, one of those purchases I purchased a couple years ago and I'm still part of that group and it's really kind of given me the biggest stepping stone and it was probably my biggest investment, um, at the time that I had ever done, uh, for my business. And it was, uh, James Wedmore, business by design. I just, I was scared to be a part of it, but I knew that this was the thing that was going to either you know, make or break me or, or know that I'm on the right track and um, being a part of that community. But really it gave me the confidence because I had put so much money into it that I just, you know, put my money where my mouth is. And he just, you know, he just give, 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 gives. And it, it, again, the relationships that I built outside of that group um, have really, you know, skyrocketed this business. So really, so my love for him is so strong because it really was the, the, the one thing that I, I knew that if I, um, if I had connected with this and I really put my, you know, put the pedal to the metal, uh, based on what he had said, um, I would go somewhere. And that's exactly two and a half years later, I'm like, you know, I'm so grateful that I did. So yeah, he's, he's the, my, the, the big, the big kahuna, I guess, I don't know, that I look up to. <laughs> That's awesome. I've, I've heard his name before, but yeah. I haven't, I haven't looked into him too much. I'll have yeah. to do that. That's really cool. Yeah, his program is amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Business by Design by James Wedmore. I'm going to check yeah. into that. Yep. So Anna, we mentioned earlier on one of the questions, some of the tools you threw out, but what's your favorite marketing tool and why? Well, I think my favorite marketing tool has got to be Member Vault. I don't know. I mean, it's so, it's so crazy. I could say, um, I could say Squarespace because that's where my website is, but Member Vault, it's just, there's something about it that I, I end up spending a lot of time in there and tweaking and making it my own and really just the value that I get from that tool I see when other people connect with that tool and then they start to use it. It just, um, I'm just, I don't know. I'm proud to use it and I can't say enough things about it. You know, I, I don't know. I, and I don't get paid. I don't, you know, I have an affiliate link that I never share. And, uh, <laughs> I just think it's a, just a great tool. If you don't have a website, you can use theirs, you know, theirs piece as a landing page and it just, it's very well done. Okay, nice. I wish you had the affiliate link because I want to check it out. <laughs> I do have one, but I just never, I never share it. So I'll share it with you. <laughs> oh, what is it? I mean, you can throw it out there. I don't mind. Well, I know it's not a short link. It's a, it's like oh. a true affiliate link that's got all the X's gotcha. and Y's. And yeah, yeah. That's how often I share it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I did. Um, I just want them to be successful because they just got such a great product. That's yep. All. That's awesome. So. That's awesome. That's kind of like the pod decks yeah. that I use. Like, yeah, yeah, we started it I mean, off like they're an affiliate. They're I'm an affiliate it. for them. Yeah, but like yeah. I just 
I use them all the time to come up with content. Right. Ideas. I want them. To Same succeed. thing. It's like whether I make a penny or not, I don't care. I just they they deserve the you know the recognition. Yeah, that's kind of I I try to yeah I, I like I appreciate that you do that because that's whenever yeah. I'm promoting something, I'll tell people like you can use you know mattpeat.com forward slash ofa, but if you literally just yeah. go Google one funnel away challenge, yeah. you know just right, take, take right, the course. You know, I don't course. care if I yeah. get paid for it or not. Um, that's really cool though. So, yeah. They'll yeah. remember they heard it from you though. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I heard it from you. You know, even yeah. if they forget to use your link exactly, or whatever. Exactly. And that, oh, that's good. the, and I, I, yeah, cool. yeah, it's fine. It all works out because <laughs> you know, I'll tell you in the member vault community, I lately too, I will get these posts that I'm tagged in and it's like, I, I found out about member vault from Anna and da, 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 da. And so it actually, and everybody wins, you know, I mean, they, I they my, say all ships rise in a high tide. So, I mean, Right. You're helping people, you know, it'll come exactly. back around. <laughs> yep. It'll so, come back around. You're absolutely right. If you could go back to when you first started all of your Facebook organic marketing and all that and give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? Mm. Don't second guess yourself. Whatever your gut feeling is, is correct. Don't ever second guess yourself. I, I think that every single time I've ever second guessed myself in um, either a strategy or, uh, you know, a course purchase, I've always regretted it. It's like, why did I even second guess it? No, this is exactly what I need. This is exactly the strategy I want to follow. I, I, um, I'm a big fan of now selling every day in your group in a very strategic way. And I wasn't in the past, but I know that it works and I know that it's, you know, so I follow my gut. I, I don't second guess myself thinking that, Oh, maybe I've talked about this product too much this week or no, I don't, I'm not second guessing. I'm just, I'm going with it. So I would say, don't second guess yourself, follow your gut. It's always right. So did you say you sell every day in your group? Yeah. You would be surprised. It are doesn't like, look like it. Yeah, because yeah. like even just scrolling through, I didn't see that. So like, are you selling like the same thing every day or what? Sorry, that kind of like really caught my attention. When you said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I have multiple. I have my signature course. I have my conversation starters. But I also realize that my members, you know, don't. And I actually have a, a 30 day group program that I'm just finishing up that the people that went through that, it's just been so amazing. So that's my, that's my high end high ticket offer. And it's, it's just gone so amazing. But uh, before I launched that, there were these smaller products. I took my, my, my big course and I broke it up into little courses. And so, you know, I have a whole, a whole map out here that, you know, this week we're talking about this product and this week we're talking about this product and it works really well. And I can't, I can't take credit for it. I, I learned it from uh, another amazing marketer who just kills it, it with her Facebook group. And that was the one piece that I was missing for quite a while is I can build relationships all day long. I can build communities all day long, but you know, the struggling, I'm not a natural, I'm a nurse. I'm not an actual natural salesperson but I learned this and it just works. And it's, and, and there's a, there's a strategy around it. There's an art around it. And that's the part that I like my little two, two cents on it is that I, I can create that experience in the group where you're, where I'm selling it, but I'm not selling it. And it's just, it works really well. Do you have a podcast episode about that yet? No, I don't. You should totally I don't do because that. I'm actually, I'm actually, you know, um, there have been days where I didn't do it and I was like, gosh, why am I not doing it? This is why, why are you not bringing in sales today? Oh, that's because I actually didn't sell. So, so I've, that's why I say I'm not second guessing myself. It's like, no, 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 it always works. Continue to do it every day. So I myself am working on it and it, it works. It works well. So there that's will be really cool. I, I, I can't wait till you come out with a podcast episode about that. Cause yeah. That, yeah. that I feel like we could have a whole nother episode just about selling every day in your group. Cause yeah, I'm really bad yeah, at that. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to, pushing my own stuff. I feel weird yeah. about doing that. 
There's a way to do it. So it's the art of conversation. It really See, is. I'm going to, as soon as we got this call, I'm going to go back to that Facebook group now and I'm going to be like looking, <laughs> looking to find everyone and all that. That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So you have to scroll way down, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, you scroll away, you have to read the posts. You, yeah. Yeah. yeah you gotta, like, yeah, like yeah. you said, it's kind of like a hidden, it's not like just yeah. pay by this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It kind of is. It is actually, but it's not. So you'll, yeah. Come so, join my group, people. You'll yes, fa Facebook group <laughs> success. Go go join that. And if you're approved, yeah. if you get past her moderation approval process. Right. You know, Here's you know, the easy, I'll tell you. The easiest way to get approved is fill out all three questions. It's, it's very easy. If you don't, you won't get approved. There you go. There you go. Facebook group success is, uh, go join it because I just joined it and it's super cool. Um, but other than that, what is the best way for people to learn more about you and hear from you? Well, I think that the podcast, I, I mean, it's, it's like this, you know, I'm having conversations with either former students of mine, um, uh, people that have really successful Facebook groups and they're sharing their strategies and they're sharing their tips. So if you want, you know, if you want to warm up to the idea, I would highly suggest just, you know, downloading the Mastering the Art of Groups podcast and just binging those and you'll 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 have this new love for a Facebook group and be excited to uh to start one and get one going if you don't already have one yep and I was pulling up your podcast because I was listening to it earlier um yeah. just so people out there know what to expect when they go over there there's a really good episode on using Instagram to grow your Facebook group that's one of my lists I really thought was cool about how to get those connections and everything. So head over Good. to Mastering the sick. Art of Groups. Check that podcast out. There's a lot of really cool stuff on there. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Appreciate you being on today's call. And remember, marketing matters. Marketing matters.